Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Alternative Jargon. Is the camera okay? Why do I look off tilt? Uh, welcome to episode 45. Um, my last couple of episodes have really delved into topics that are extremely polarizing to people on either side of the political aisle. That is, unless you have a sense of humor. Uh, I'm just kidding. I can't help what uh, people find amusing and what they do not. But I know what I find amusing, and that's what I like to spout daily on this show. However, I do get really tired of talking about politics, talking about world issues, because I'm sitting in a room in front of a tripod with a salt lamp and a sparkling water from my local Amish uh, discount grocery store, which I'll crack in a minute for some ASMR. But uh, it's not really an appropriate situation to sit here and tackle um, presidential assassinations and dropping out of the race and people pulling strings in Israel sitting in Georgetown. You know, it, stuff like that, you, you have to stray from it. Or uh, if I don't, I'll probably have a few gray hairs very soon. Um, but let's crack this. It's grapefruit-flavored sparkling water. Never heard of this brand before, but let's get into it. Today, I wanted to bring you an episode where I uh, pretty much rant and rave about things that I like, things that I love, things that I find awesome. Um, and politics is not one of those. I hate it. Uh, I like to talk about it because it's the easiest thing to make jokes about. But... Um, I really like uh, a lot of things, and I do a lot of hating on this podcast, and I find it's easy to talk about things you either love or hate. It's not easy to talk about things in the middle. Um, so let's uh, shift the polar poles the other way, and let's discuss some things today that I love, and if you don't care, then tune away. I really like sparkling water. It's really good. I really like Monster Energy. It's really good. Um, yeah, I really like the Doc Martens boots I just ordered, and they came in a day early. Check it out. Check it out. You know, these boots, um, have uh, they've been making them since 1960. They were invented by a Nazi, and they are... I, I really like versatile things. These boots could be worn by an art major at NYU, by a skinhead, by um, a school shooter, or by anybody. And that's what's beautiful about them. A lot of times you can really read people by what they wear. Um, and, you know, you can definitely probably get a read on me by these. But uh, like I said, they can be worn by anybody. And that's beautiful. Um, I really love uh, contradictions. You know, it is very ironic that um, Doc Martin boots can be worn by both um, skinheads and by art majors at NYU because politically, behaviorally, um, those two people are about as far away from each other as you can be. Um, one of those people may well actually... Maybe that's not so far from the truth anymore. Um, it's not NYU, but, you know, I could definitely see some people sporting Doc Martens at Columbia University when they, like, set up the camps. And if they found out that a student was, like, Jewish, they just would not let them uh, walk through their own college campus. And honestly, the skinheads would have probably loved that. Um, they would have been on board with that. So maybe not as far away from each other as they once were. Um, but in all other regards, besides maybe being anti-Semitic, probably really a lot of differences between those two groups. Um, but yeah, one of the things I wanted to talk about today, and I mentioned this is an episode that I'm bringing to you with love in my heart, um, but I'm still probably going to find a way um, to um, let some hatred flow because it wouldn't be... Um, you know, a proper episode without that. Um, but I really love contradictions in people. I love people that are their own person. And I, there are people in this world who you can very easily put into a box. And I know that sounds offensive. That sounds really shallow and mean for me to say, but, um, and this is all, uh, 
all types of groups of politics, behaviors, values. There are people that you can look at and hear one sentence out of their mouth and very quickly sort of define them. And I don't like that because I think uh, human beings are extremely complex creatures. And I think that if a lot of people would just branch out once in a while, they themselves would be very complex because I don't think you can um, be a non-complex person if you've gone out into the world and seen new things, met new people. Um, and I truly believe that. I think that if you, if you're a person who doesn't like a certain group of people, whether you're racist, xenophobic, misogynistic, whatever it may be, uh, I really truly believe that if you met one of those people that you don't like and talk to them for five minutes, uh, you would find a lot of common ground because we are complex creatures, but at the same time, it's like, what do we like to do? We like to eat good food. We like to have a nice one to three bowel movements a day, depending on your fiber intake. And we really like to sleep. Some people like, a lot of people like to drink. A lot of people uh, like to abuse drugs. And that is all over the world. And, uh, you know, people uh, are very complex, but also very simple. And yeah, I think if a lot of people branch out, there would be a lot less hate in their hearts. Um, but a lot of these people are stuck in a box and they don't care to leave the box. And um, I guess I will, I just said I hate talking politics, but honestly, politics is the easiest way to talk about this. So in my mind, there are like two groups of people at either ends of this spectrum of being in a box. The On the right side, you have, um, you know, guys who, uh, guys or girls, by the way, um, whose entire personality can be summed up within the parameters of a, a snapback hat and a can of Zins. And then on the other side, you have people who can be summed up in the terms of um, the era's tour and, you know, I don't know. But you know what I mean? And it really hurts because to me, life as a human being is a canvas. And every day you get to wake up and add a stroke to that canvas, no matter what it may be. Whether that stroke is... Um, you know, taking up smoking cigarettes, or whether that stroke is going to the gym. Maybe that stroke is buying a new pair of shoes. Um, but you can really, really customize your life. And it sounds cheesy to say, but life really is um, a work of art. Your human life is a canvas. And I think that's a really beautiful thing. And I think it's a thing that a lot of people don't utilize and understand as much as they really should. Because uh, like a canvas, there are parameters that you have to stay inside. If you go off the edge of the canvas and you paint on the other side, no one's going to be able to see your beautiful artwork that you've made on that side. What I mean by this is that obviously art has limitations and so does your life. You cannot do anything and everything. Um... Nobody alive today is going to be able to add the brush stroke of visiting another solar system to their canvas. Nobody today is, you know, going to be able to add the brush stroke of retirement to their canvas. And that's okay. Not everything is always going to be possible. Um, but there are definitely still a lot of options. There's so much you can still do to your canvas. Um, and there are things also, um, that are, depending on culture, depending on where you're from, are kind of built into it. Um, you know, let's say 100 years ago, if you were, you know, a 14-year-old girl, having your husband picked for you by your elders was part of your canvas, and that sucked. Because that's a big part of the canvas, you know. Um, today, having a job, it has to be part of it. 
um, unless you want to live in like a tent city and, you know, take crank all day. That is an option too, but for the vast majority of people, the job has to be part of your artwork, you know? And that's just how it is. Um, but you can still make that uh, a less painful part of it if you just either enjoy what you do, which is easier said than done, or if you um, if you make the most make the most of it. Um, I have a a bachelor's degree, but for the moment. While I job search for something that relates to my bachelor's degree, I'm still working the same grocery store job that I have for the last three years. And you could look at that and say, this is really depressing. This really sucks. This is not what I just paid all this money and went to school for four years to do. Um, obviously, everything's not going to pan out in the first two months after graduation. And that's okay. That's understandable. Stuff takes time. But um, as corny as it sounds... Every day I go to my grocery store job and I talk to my coworkers, I share stories, I tell jokes, uh, because that's what you have to do. If you show up every day with a negative attitude, you're going to have a negative attitude and it's going to be negative. But you, I'd also recommend Monster Energy. Um, every day before work, I stop at the gas station and get an energy drink and it really propels me through my day. Um, download the McDonald's app because um, the $5.20 piece every day for lunch is not going to break the bank and it's going to be a highlight of your day. Um, there are things you can do to improve your life and caffeine and fat and cholesterol is where it all starts. Um, it might be different for you, that's for me. Um, but yes, and look, uh, a lot of what I say sounds very judgmental in this show, and I don't, I don't want to sound like somebody who is a control freak and wants to control how people live their lives, because I don't. But I definitely think there's millions of people in the world who uh, just don't have their own tastes picked by themselves. There are people in the world who their taste in music, their taste in art, their taste in TV shows and movies is handpicked for them by somebody in a, cord, uh, a corporate boardroom. And the thing is, there's so much access to art and music and TV today. There's so many projects being made, stuff being put out that, look, it's a, I'm not saying don't listen to anything mainstream. Some, like a lot of mainstream stuff is good, but... If that's all you listen to, you're not picking what you like. You are having what you like pick for you. Um, and I guarantee that if uh, if people knew how to access new stuff, they would find stuff that they like a lot more than that mainstream stuff. Because um, for a while, that was me too. I mean, four or five years ago, my taste in music was whatever was trending on TikTok and whatever rap caviar shit out that day. And thankfully, I've moved past that, and I found so much new cool stuff. Don't get me wrong, um, some of my liked songs on Spotify still do come from, you know, Patrick Bateman edits, and that's okay, because some of that stuff is awesome. Um, but branching out and finding new stuff is so fun, for me at least, and so important. And uh, reading books has really been good for me recently too. Um, since like the beginning of 2023, I have gotten really back into reading and it's awesome because right now, for example, I'm reading Moby Dick and he just wrote like a whole chapter about the, all the different types of whales. And do I care about the different types of whales? Not necessarily. However, it's important to sit there and still read that stuff. To me, call me a weirdo, but it's nice to sit there and read stuff that maybe doesn't interest you because it's still like, okay, this is whatever it is. But I think it's an important mental exercise, and maybe I am just weird for that. But um, I've been reading a lot of classics recently, trying to uh, uh, see what all the hype is about, and uh, if myself from five, six years ago heard me saying this, I would 
be like, you're a nerd. And that's okay. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. But um, like I said, I don't, I don't want to control how people live their life or what they consume or anything like that. But it does hurt me to see people whose entire wardrobe, whose entire taste in music, whose entire personality, whose entire political ideology has is just something they heard regurgitated on the news. It's just something that they saw in a magazine ad. It's just whatever their favorite TikTok influencer is wearing and listening to that week. Because it's so boring. It's It's so boring. Um, and I love when people contradict themselves. For example, I would love to meet a person who, um, voted for Trump and who, um, listens to Olivia Rodrigo. I would love to meet, um, you know, a, a, a suicidal Marxist person who doesn't believe in their own constitutional right to buy the gun and paint the wall with their brain. Like those people are so interesting because it's, they're not in the box. They are way out of the box. They don't fit anywhere. And that's awesome. That's really cool to me. Um, stuff like that I think is really cool, but, um, yeah, this episode really makes me sound, uh, pretentious and mean, doesn't it? Oh, well. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? All I'm trying... My whole point is just keep an open mind on stuff. That's my whole point. Which, if that's controversial to say, then... Oh, well. But, um, yeah. It's really fun. And I love when stuff doesn't fit in a box. Because that's what's fun. That's what's cool. That's what I like. Um... What was I? What was my next point gonna be? This episode is dragging. If you tuned away, you honestly uh, saved yourself some time, I think, because this is just not good right now. Usually, I have like a four-page work document to go off of. Today, I actually, I, before I was falling asleep the other night, I did this whole episode in my head of exactly what I wanted to say, and I think I popped some melatonin and was like half asleep and dreary, and what I was saying then was so much funnier and inspired than this. But nonetheless, we will roll on. Your life is a canvas. And if you don't start adding your own brush strokes consciously and willingly to your canvas that you handpicked yourself, then someday you're going to look at your canvas and it is not going to be anything that you painted with your own hand. It's going to be something that was painted by a corporate ad board something that was painted by whatever rap caviar pooped out that week, something that was painted by whatever TikTok shop forced down your throat from a Hong Kong factory. And I don't want to see that. I don't want to see that for anybody. I want to look at everyone's own canvas of their own life and go, that is the most unique thing I've ever seen. I don't necessarily get it. I don't even necessarily like it, but I'm glad it was painted by you and not by somebody else. Um... Every time you add a brush stroke to your canvas that is not your own, it becomes less your own. Um, maybe I should just name this episode uh, The Picture of Dorian Gray, because I'm kind of ripping that idea, kind of not. That one's about an evil, that's a classic book if you didn't know about, uh, a guy who gets a portrait of himself painted, and then basically he doesn't age because he would he while he was getting his portrait painted he's like i hope i don't age like it's so sad. he's from london it's so sad that this portrait of me will always be young and handsome looking and someday i'll be old and gray and then basically he wished that and so now he doesn't age but his portrait does and every time he does something bad and evil um he stays the same but his portrait gets worse and then by the end of the show, or yeah, the show, by the end of the book, he's basically a self-centered narcissistic sociopath living in 19th century London, Victorian era. And he ends up killing his best friend. And then he uh, looks at his portrait at the end of the book. And it is like the ugliest, most horrendous, demonic looking thing ever. Um, so that's sort of 
comparable to the point I'm making, not so much, but, um, yeah, and I, maybe, I don't know, I'm trying to, uh, trying to put my thoughts into words, but, um, some people don't care about art. I understand that as well. Some people would hear me saying that life is a canvas and just think that I am a a stuck up socialite, um, which admittedly I do have some characteristics of that. I like to read classic literature and uh, discover new stuff, which might make me sound out of touch with people who work in a steel mill and stuff like that, which maybe I am, but, um, you know, some people don't care. Some people, uh, don't care what their canvas looks like. And I understand that. Um, but I think there are probably some people that are aware of the customizable nature of life, but they uh, just don't know how to get started and branch out. And this is my most pretentious, petty episode I think I've ever made. Because as I'm saying these words, I know I sound like a stuck-up idiot. Um, Maybe I just won't put it out. Just kidding, I will. Um, Because I have this OCD of I want to do an episode every week to keep up with it. And hopefully grow it. And if I don't, I'll be mad. And I'm too lazy to uh, draft up a new idea. And this one might be shorter. This one is probably going to be pretty short. Because I really have nothing to to say besides what I've already said. Um, but yeah. My main point is... I've already said it ten times. Why do I have to say it again? I pro- <laughs> this, this is so funny. This episode makes me sound like I'm losing my mind. I'm not, I promise. I'm fine. I just honestly, there's no presidential assassinations this week. There's no um, new really fun election news. Um, There's probably still people dying in Gaza, but that's old news. There's probably still um, a lot of crazy stuff going on. But I did want to uh, maybe scratch the surface of a deeper topic today get away from the news headlines, talk about something new. So that's what I did. I'm not losing my mind. Um, I, uh, you know what, let's go to AP News right now and see what my alternative today would have been. Simone Biles, Team USA, earns redemption with Olympic gold in women's gymnastics. I already talked about the Olympics last week, Um, so I can't do it uh, again this week. In other news... Who's going to be Kamala Harris's running mate? Boring. Who cares? Um, So yeah, that's my other options for episode topics. Nothing is really popping off on TikTok. That's really funny. Um, No really new good trends or anything. So I decided I'd be pretentious this week. Um, But anyway, it might be a shorter episode. Either way, I hope you enjoyed. I hope that If one person who watches or listens to this understands where I'm coming from, then that's enough. And that's usually how it goes every week. Um, If one person gets something out of it and enjoys it, that that makes my day. So um, I don't really think I have anything else to talk about. So please go out there, add some new fresh strokes to your canvas today that you add yourself um, or don't. Do what you want to do. Maybe your uh, you adding strokes to your canvas is just not caring, and I'm, that is a whole new perspective I could really go deep on, but I won't. Um, so thanks for listening, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Really short, bite sized episode today, but you have other things to do, like um, going to get a Monster Energy in a five dollar twenty piece. Um, we will see you next week. Goodbye. We will leave you with a. I can't do it. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. I can. I'll write it and we'll do it live. Fucking thing sucks. Write that down. Write that down.